Hey team! Hey! What are you doing? I am conducting a foul follow. A foul follow? Yeah, a foul follow. Dr. Sally was talking about it today here at class at Science Club University. <laughs> that isn't what Dr. Sally mentioned. She said a focal follow. Oh, what's the difference? Well, a focal follow is used for primates, not chickens. But this is prediction chicken like a foul. Right, but, but you're mixing up the words. A fowl is a chicken, but a focal follow is a technique used by primatologists or someone who studies primates to observe them and learn about their behavior by following a specific one around for a certain amount of time. Oh, I get it now. Not a fowl. No, not a fowl. Focal. Focal follow with primatologists. Uh, okay, well, speaking of primates, who's your favorite primatologist? Oh, by a long shot, it has to be Jane Goodall. She's an acclaimed primatologist known for her pioneering work with chimpanzees. Oh yeah, she's amazing. I remember reading somewhere that she was given the opportunity to work with fossils mm. when she was in the beginning of her career, but she decided to work with primates instead. Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Remember last time when we dug and uncovered different objects from the ground? Kind of like how archaeologists do when they're looking for fossils. Yeah, I remember. Well, something that I also learned today with Dr. Sally is that resin preserves these ancient artifacts, insects, and fossils for millions of years. Resin. Can you remind me again what resin was? Well, in nature, a resin is a sticky, gluey material made by plants as a protective layer. The resin from some kinds of plants can stick around for a long time in a fossil that we call an amber. Oh yeah, I, I remember now. Fossils in amber give us insights into the past. That's so cool. Soon we're gonna get a little slimy when we explore the world of amber and all of its secrets. Slimy, I'm so excited. Let's get to it. Woo! <laughs> Wow, learning about resin and focal balls was so much fun. It was. Now we're gonna make our own amber <gasps> slime. I cannot wait. All right, so for this experiment, we're gonna need gloves, goggles, borax or activator, food coloring, water, glue, four popsicle sticks, a cup, a toy, a paper plate, and a beaker, or any type of container that you may have lying around. And this is gonna be messy, young scientists, so make sure you keep your gloves on and your goggles on as well to stay safe. Okay, T, let's dive into the slimy adventure. Alrighty. First things first, safety, safety, obviously. So we're gonna put our protective goggles on and our gloves. These gloves are nice and tight. Yes, they are. Thanks for the details on safety, Lou. Now we're ready. So we've got our plastic beaker and our glue. So let's fill up the beaker with one fourth cup of water and one fourth cup of glue. All right. So I'll do it and then fill up your water again. Stick around there. Great. <laughs> Thank you. And then one fourth cup of glue. All right. Go right ahead, Liz. Thank you. I don't really know necessarily just how to measure this. I'm just gonna eyeball kind of a similar um, amount that we put with the water, because it's the same amount. No, that looks good. <laughs> All right. And I am gonna put it in our smart thingamajiggy, which is a beaker, it's not a thingamajiggy. Making me hungry. Making me hungry Everything too. makes me hungry. Perfect. Amazing. Now, what next we're gonna do is we are going to stir it up with a popsicle stick until it's mi it's mixed up all nicely. Um, everything is kind of congealed together. Okay. I think I might have to put a little bit more glue in my. Don't write ahead, Liv. Put as much glue as you need. Thank you. Alrighty. Mm. Mine's 
is looking pretty mixed. I mean, it won't be too slimy until we yeah. add the, oh, for sure. the special ingredient. But it is a bit. Yeah, now let's a bit grab slimy. the food coloring and add five to 10 drops. Awesome. I'm gonna grab the green color and I guess you get red. I get red. All right. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. All right. I went all 10, you know, I like mine very pigmented. Yeah. And we're gonna keep bright. stirring. Ooh, mine's looking like true slime. Let's steer it up. True green slime is what mine's looking it like It does. Right now. It's so pretty, I love it. Wow. I know, it's gorgeous and the color makes it stand out, Definitely. honestly. All right. Now that that's all mixed together, we are going to mix half a teaspoon of borax, or our activator, and three-fourths cup of warm water. Now, borax, or this activator, can be found at a local grocery store, in the cleaning aisle, uh, or anything like that. And we have warm water already provided for us by tea, and we're just going to take a little bit of this activator. Like, probably around this yeah. much, I would say. You know, that looks good. And Metaphor. sprinkle it on in. Here you are. Thank you. Liz. And we also are going to be putting, what, three-fourths cup of warm water? Yeah. So uh, um, am I using half of this for me, half of it for you? Uh, no, both of them are Oh, special. I took yours, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I pour it all in. Just pour it all in. Okay. Don't get in there, don't get roost. Whoa. Whoa. Transformation. Alrighty, mixing and mixing. Everything, Whoa. mine is getting kind of stuck on the stick a little bit. Oh, well that means it's gooey. So, you know, part of it's gooey. I don't know if I'm getting a lot of, <laughs> of goo anywhere else, but oh. I'm gonna keep mixing and see oh, yeah. what happens. Wow. Oh, yours is gooing. It's, it's gooing. See, I might have, I might, I don't know what's happening it's, with mine. It's, you know, it's, it's transforming. Trial and error. Yeah, for sure. Oh, 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 oh wow. you're getting really slimy. Oh, I am. Maybe, maybe we need a little more activator. A little more activator? Maybe a little more glue. Too. Maybe a little glue, maybe a little more activator. <laughs> We're doing a great job. Oh, oh. Splat. This is why you always have something down on the table, young scientists. We warned scientists you guys messy. this one is gonna get messy. Ooh. It smells pretty interesting too. Definitely. So if your slime isn't uh, firming up as you would like it, young scientists, feel free to add a little bit more of that activator just to, um, you know, give it a little help. I believe the activator is kind of what makes it um, it's the all stick formula. together. Oh, look, at it. it's nice and... Hey, yours is really sliming. Whoa. I'm jealous. <laughs> Mine is not so much, but it still is there. You know, just keep mixing it. Okay, you'll I'll just keep there. stirring. I won't give you'll, up. You'll never give up. I won't. That's another trick about science, Yes. to never give up. Try, try again. Because sometimes, you know, it might not go well the first time. Or the measurements might be off. It sounds like mac and cheese. It's gooey. It's it is so gooey. cool. Look at it coming together. I know. Once it's solid, though, transfer it to a paper plate. The paper plate, all righty. So this is our plate. We're going to transfer it. Young scientist. <laughs> oh, it got on my lab coat. No. <laughs> All righty. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. All right. Slimy. Slimy for sure. Whoa. Ooh, Ooh. gooey on the plate. <laughs> the plasma. Yeah. Way. All right, I got most of my slime out on the plate. Yeah. Now, we're gonna knead the slime on the plate for at least one minute. The more we knead, the better it gets. All right. I feel like this is just added movement, just yeah. to kind of make it one congealed thing. 
Oh yeah. This is very satisfying to um, play with. We, we have different definitions of kneading, for sure. <laughs> like kneading dough. Yeah. I'm just folding a little. Oh, mine is sticky. Yours is sticky? Put too much glue in it. See, I was worried mine was gonna be a little too sticky, but I feel like it's, it's, it's acting okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my. It's getting there. It is getting there. The slime is getting there. And once we feel it's all nice and neat, we will take our plastic toy and put it in. All right. So, after now, your slime has been kneaded, let's bring in our plastic toy insect. Awesome. This is the fun part. So I'm gonna give you, cause I'll take the red one so it stands out a bit. Oh yeah, that would make sense. And then sense. I'll give you the green one. Green. And then what are we gonna do? We're just gonna put it in our slime? Yes. Awesome. So we're gonna just put it in the slime. Thank you, Of Liv. course. Okay, so just, bye friend. Buddy. There it goes. This is so interesting. It's just how insects get trapped in amber. It's like our very own slime fossil. That's right, Liv. We've got our own amber slime creation. Now, we're gonna remove our toy. Remove it? Yeah. Do I have to dig through the slime to get it? Seems like it. Alrighty. So it's stuck inside our amber, and we just gotta take it out. Whoa. Whoa. It got some slime stuck, stuck with it. Oh yeah. But that's okay. And we can drop our extra, our excess um, bug into our cups. Yes. Let's plop it on in there. Nice. Plop. <laughs> Dr. Sally gave us these toys. I hope she'll understand that we put them in slime. Ah, oh, she will. In the name of science. In the name of science. Mm -hmm. All right, young scientists. Now you see the imprint of the bug. It looks just like a fossil track. That's so cool. It's like looking at a toy that kids would play with a long time ago. Oh, like in the, in the past. past. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're so right, wow. When you see the imprint of something, it gives you a deeper understanding of what it originally was and tells us a story about that object. That reminds me of our friend Melina. I think she's in her lab right now trying to uncover the deeper story behind an ancient bone from her dig site. Huh. Let's check her out. Welcome to the lab. Today we're going to be sampling the sheep or goat mandible to learn more information about it beyond just the bone itself. So I'm going to take a little sample by focusing on a small portion so I preserve the rest of the bone and I'm going to use a dental drill to do it. So we just drill gently. to collect some powder, which we then put into our tube. This little sample alone is gonna tell us whether this is a sheep or a goat, and then it's also gonna give us information about the animal's diet. So now we have to process the sample. First, the sample goes into some strong acid, which is why we must always be wearing our lab attire, lab coat, and gloves to protect ourselves. This helps get rid of the mineral portion of the bone, leaving just the protein we want to work with. Then it has to be cleaned with water and other chemical solutions. These help us remove any lingering contaminants that might be attached to the protein. From here, it gets split into two portions. One of the portions goes to a freeze dryer to produce this fluffy collagen that's gonna go for isotopes and give us that dietary information. The other portion takes a few more steps to identify the sheep versus goat. We take our sample and we digest it in an enzyme, kind of like what happens in the stomach, and it sits in an incubator overnight. After 
it's digested, we use a pipette, this fancy thing right here, to sample it onto this plate, and it gets sent off for analysis for that. And that's a day in the lab. Wow, we learned so much today. We sure did. I hope we can leave the classroom soon and apply all of this archeological knowledge somewhere outside. Well, you're in luck, Liv. <gasps> Next time, we're gonna learn about another way that plants help us learn about the past. Tree rings. Tree rings, like, like, like a field trip? Oh yeah, <gasps> a field trip. Yes, I can't wait, I'm so excited. <sighs> well, until next time, young scientists. Stay learning and stay slimy. Bye. Bye. Oh,